Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearson Ed Excel International A Level, Biology Unit 1 for January 2022. I will do this paper in two videos. The part one video will contain question one to question four, and the part two video will contain question five to question eight. So let us begin. Question one says the photograph shows a saffron crocus plant. This is the plant we're looking at. So they go down here to say this plant grows from a bulb. The bulb contains starch as an energy storage molecule for the crocus. How many of the following statements are correct for the starch in living cells? So starch consists of a mixture of two types of polysaccharides. This is correct. Starch contains amylose as well as amylopectin. Then next they say starch contains only one six bonds. This is wrong. Starch contains one four as well as one six glycosidic bonds. And lastly, they say starch is insoluble in water. This is correct. So the two correct statements are this one and that one. This is wrong. So the answer here should be a C because only two statements are correct. Let's move on to the next part. Here they say saffron is a spice that is derived from plants of the flower of the saffron crocus. Saffron contains a disaccharide called Zentiobias, read through the following description of some disaccharides. Complete the description by writing the most appropriate word on the dotted line. So they begin by saying, disaccharides contain of two monosaccharides joined together by an, it should be a glycosidic covalent bond. Sucrose and lactose are both disaccharides. This is correct. They both contain a molecule of glucose. Remember, sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose, while lactose is made up of glucose and galactose. So here, when they go on to say, sucrose also contain one, contains one molecule of fructose, and lactose also contains one molecule of galactose. So those should be the correct answers. They're going to say, gentiobias is formed from two identical monosaccharides. Name the type of reaction that joins these monosaccharides together in the, in the formation of gentiobias. This is a condensation reaction which involves the loss of a water molecule when two monosaccharides come together to form the disaccharide. So the answer should be a condensation reaction. The molecular mass of each of the monosaccharides in gentiobias is 180. The table shows the molecular mass of the elements present in the monosaccharides. So each carbon contains molar mass 12, hydrogen 1, and oxygen 16. Here they ask, which is the molecular mass of gentiobias. Remember, this one here is a disaccharide, so each uh, monosaccharide is uh, supposed to be 180, because here they said the monosaccharide in that is 180. So to find the molar mass of the disaccharide, which is gentiobias, it has to be 2 times the molar mass of the monosaccharide minus the molar mass of water. So in this case, you can see this one here is a minus. I'll put it there, minus. So this is going to be 2 times 180, which is 360 minus 18, giving us a 342 as the answer. So the answer here should be a C. Question two, the cardiac cycle describes the events that take place in the heart during one complete heartbeat. The diagram shows the a heart in one of the stages, stage F of the cardiac cycle. So we can see stage F. You imagine I have taken away these arrows because they were not there. So that is gonna be the heart stage. So down here they say, um, what is the name of the blood vessel label G, this blood vessel here? If we can see, this blood vessel is connected to this side, meaning, remember, this is going to be the right side, and that is the left side of the heart. The right side contains the oxygenated blood, so this is the right ventricle with the oxygenated blood. When blood leaves the right ventricle, it has to go through the pulmonary artery, so that blood vessel is the pulmonary artery, taking the oxygenated blood away from the heart, to the lungs to be oxygenated. The next part says which row of the table identifies the stages before and after stage F. Remember in stage F, blood is being pumped from the ventricles through the blood vessels, the pulmonary artery, as well as the aorta, out of the body. It means the stage that came before this uh, stage F should have been atriosystole, and then the stage that is going to come afterwards is going to be cardiac diastole because the, the cardiac diastole is a period of relaxation of the heart muscle accompanied by filling of the chambers. Uh, this is for filling of the atria. So the answer here should be an A because before the ventricular systole, 
we have a, an atriosystole, and after that, we will have a cardiac diastole. So let's move on. Here they say, the graph shows pressure changes in the left ventricle of a, heart, of a person. You can see, so this graph is showing information occurring or changes in pressure within the ventricle. Then they say, calculate the heart rate of this person. Express your answer to three significant figures. Now, what I did, I chose points that are going to help me to find the heart rate properly. So I counted one heartbeat. So I chose from this peak here, I chose a point 0 0.0.3 because it matches well with the highest point here and the highest point here, which is 1.1. .1. So for me, I knew this whole thing is one complete cycle here. So I did 1.1 .1 minus 0 0.3 and it gave me 0 0.8 seconds. So it takes 0 0.8 seconds to make one, one beat. So that is what I got from there. As you can see this information down here, I tried to get that. So in one second, it, in a 0 0.8 seconds, it's going to be one beat. But remember heart rate is calculated in beats per minute. So I need to convert the time 0 0.8 seconds to minutes. How do I do that? I divide by 60. So 0 0.8 divided by 60, you get 0, .0 one three 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 minutes so this was one heartbeat or one bit uh, in 0 0.0133 minutes so here i had to find how many bits are going to be in one minute in one minute we're going to have one divided by 0 0.0133 which gives me 75 bits per minute so the answer here should be 75 bits per minute now they wanted us to write this in three significant figures so i had to round it off it could be 75.0 bits per minute, or you have to use your calculator. I think, uh, let me use my calculator a little bit slowly here, really fast. And then uh, to see if I can get a better rounded off version. 1 divided by 0 0.01333. Yeah, it's about 75.0. 75.0, you can put a 0 bits per minute. Because here yeah, they say three significant figures, so it has to be 0 0.0. Let's move on. So here, lastly, they say another line could be drawn on this graph to show the pressure changes in the right ventricle. Remember the right ventricle here, this one carries or contains deoxygenated blood and it does not contract as much. So the pressure created in here is not gonna be as great. So they asked you to describe the shape and the position of this line. Give the result for your answer. For me, I said the graph will have a similar shape or it will be similar in shape because the left hand side or the left ventricle and the right ventricles will be uh, contracting simultaneously, or you could say the right-hand side and the left-hand side of the heart beat simultaneously, so both ventricles will contract at the same time. However, the peak will be lower. For the, for the second graph, which is uh, for the right ventricle, the peak is going to be lower because the pressure in the right-hand side is lower than the pressure generated uh, in the left-hand side. Remember, the left-hand side is pushing blood through the iota sending it to the rest of the body so it has to be pushed at very high pressure while that from the right side is going to the lungs a shorter distance and there is no requisition of very high pressure so it leaves the heart at very high at lower pressure so i say less pressure is used to prevent damaging the alveoli so blood leaving the heart i want to take you back here blood leaving this point here to go out goes at a lower pressure in comparison to that leaving here to go out here because this is going to go to that blood vessel which is the iota and then this one here is going to go through this pulmonary artery so it's just going close by to the lungs it will require less pressure than this one sending to the rest of the body so going back to where we had stopped this brings us to the end of question two let's move on to question three question three an average sized human chromosome contains a dna molecule with about 300 million nucleotides arranged in pairs a says describe the structure of a nucleotide pair. This is very important that you understand they say nucleotide pair. So it means we are looking at this pair like that, the way they do pair. So I say, uh, for, I say in DNA, a nucleotide contains a phosphate group. Here we can see there is a nitrogen base. Either it can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine, and a sugar, which is deoxyribose. Remember again, we're talking about DNA. There is a phosphate. We can see that. There is a sugar and then there is a nitrogen base. The nitrogen base could be any of those. Then I went on to say the nucleotides in a pair are held together 
by hydrogen bonds. Remember, this is a pair held together by hydrogen bonds. And the complementary bases appeared, example, i.e., adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine. So this description here is showing you how a nucleotide pair is going to be. In each nucleotide, we will have a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. The sugar is always deoxyribose. The nitrogen base can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. And in between the two pairs, there is a hydrogen bond that com connects the two uh, different nucleotides. So and uh, the pairing between that and that, complementary bases have to be paired up. Adenine pairs up with thymine and cytosine with guanine. So that is how you get your three marks. Next, they say, before a cell can divide, the DNA molecule has to replicate, increase in number. This takes place in the S phase of the cell cycle. Human DNA replicates at a rate of 50 nucleotides per second. Calculate how long it would take to the nearest hour of 150 million nucleotides to replicate. Assume that the replication starts at uh, one end of the molecule and continues to the other end. So here I say that if 50 nucleotides per second are replicated, it means 150 times 10 power 6, this is 150 million. Nucleotides will take 1 over 50 times 150 times 10 power 6 seconds, which is going to be this time. Now, remember the time in hours, 1 hour is equal to 3600 second, and therefore converting this time in hours is going to be 833 hours. So it will take 833 hours. Remember to convert here, this is seconds or seconds, converting seconds to hour. One hour contains 3,600 3, seconds. So if these are seconds, divide by that to make time in hours. Moving on. Here they say in human cells, replication of DNA occurs at several sites along the molecule. These sites are called replication bubbles. The photograph shows a replication bubble. You can see that point here. That is a replication bubble. And we have the double helix. So moving down here, they say the diagram shows how the DNA is replicated in one replication bubble. You see there is unwinding, and then the part is going to be replicated. This one in the opposite direction, and that in the other direction. So moving on to the next page, they ask, explain the role of DNA polymerase in the replication bubble. Use the information in the diagram and your know or knowledge to support your answer. Everybody should know that DNA polymerase binds to each DNA strand to initiate replication. And then the DNA polymerase lines up nucleotides. It's the one that lines up nucleotides along the strand for formation of the phosphodiester bond between the adjacent nitrogen bases on the nucleotides that are close to each other. And this ensures that the synthesis of DNA occurs in both directions. So any two of these, you would score your two marks you're looking for. And then we go on here, they say, in human cells, S phase lasts about 10 hours. Suggest why each DNA molecule is replicated using many replication bubbles. Of course, saving time to have faster cell division. If the S phase is only 10 hours, if there is no multiple replication bubbles, then it's going to take a longer period of time. So I said, to increase the speed of the replication process, ensuring that replication lasts less than 10 hours so that cell division can occur faster. So that is how you can get the three marks. So this brings us to the end of question three. Let's move on to question four. Question four, cystic fibrosis is an inherited recessive disease caused by mutations in a gene on chromosome seven. Give the meaning of the term a gene. A gene is a sequence of DNA bases that codes for amino acids for a specific protein. So that is a perfect definition. Next, they say, explain how mutations results in cystic fibrosis. Remember, cystic fibrosis is when there is a, a, a deformed CFTR protein. So it means there is a mutation that occurs and then a specific gene, is a, a mutated gene is going to be left. During the process of transcription, they're going to copy the wrong information or the mutated gene, and then the translation is going to lead to formation of a protein that was unintended. So I say the mutation occurs in the gene coding for the CFTR protein. Then the transcription and translation occur, but a wrong sequence of amino acids is used to make the protein. Therefore, the form protein does not function properly due to the wrong structure. Again, to stop here, remember, 
The folding of a protein is due to the, its primary structure, the sequence of amino acids. If the sequence of amino acids is wrong, it means the protein is going to fold, forming a 3D structure in a wrong way. And therefore, if the 3D structure is a functional protein, it could have the wrong function. So it could not function properly or as intended to be, to be functioning. So lastly, here I say this results in the failure to transport chloride ions outside the cell and water doesn't leave, so sticky mucus forms, leading to the side effects of having cystic fibrosis, basically. Remember, when somebody has cystic fibrosis, uh, the deformed CFTR protein cannot let chloride ions to leave it from the inside of the cell to the surrounding so that the water can follow by osmosis. So the produced mucus outside the cell is going to be stickier because it's not diluted, leading to problems of infection and so on. So let's continue. Here they say part C, population car carrier screen, PCS, uh, is one type of genetic screening. Uh, this involves screening people who want to, uh, a child to see if they are carriers of genetic disorders. In one country, the number of babies born with cystic fibrosis went down following the introduction of PCS. So just why the number of babies born with cystic fibrosis uh, went down. So remember they carried out screening, population carrier screening. This process allowed couples who both carry a copy of the mutation to be identified. So they can therefore make a decision whether to have a child or not. And if they choose to have a child, they can go through adoption or IVF. In IVF, the embryos have to be screened so that those, uh, those that uh, have the mutation are not implanted while those without the mutation could be implanted. So due to this, these will result in fewer babies being born who have the homozygous or who have the gene, basically, or the allele for formation of cystic fibrosis. So the key thing here is parents are more aware. They're going to be more precautious. They will resort to alternative methods, either adoption or um, having or basically going through IVF in order for the embryos to be screened, in order for them to have a child. So overall, overall the allele frequency or the allele for cystic fibrosis, its frequency is going to be reduced greatly in that population, which will lead to the number of babies born with cystic fibrosis to go down. This brings us to the end of question four. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel. I'll see you in the next video. And like I said previously, I will put the link to the uh, video number two below the description box of this video. Bye-bye.